Hello, welcome back to Retro for You. Today we're going to be building this. It's a MIDI port adapter for the Amiga computer. It'll work on the 1200, the 600, the 1000, etc. Any Amiga that's got a serial port, which is basically all of them. So this video is sponsored again by PCB Way. So a big thank you for them for their continuous support of these small channels. So before I crack on with this build, I just want to give you a bit of news. I've actually gone ahead and purchased retro for you domain. So retro for youcouk is now owned by myself. I will be creating a website there with a bit of things, but more importantly, it gives me an email address for you to reach out to me. So down below is the email address for me now, which you can reach out to me on it. It's neil at retro for you co.uk so it's easy to remember which is great for me too especially when we're getting older so after a short video about our sponsor we're going to crack straight on with a build starting with the resistors so let's crack on before we jump into the video a quick shout out about our sponsor pcb way if you're looking to bring your electronics project to life pcb way is your one-stop shop for high quality pcb manufacturing and assembly fast turnaround times and unbeatable prices as little as five dollars you make it easy to get your designs made just the way you want from custom materials to assembly services and even 3d printing and more pcb way has everything you need to turn your ideas into reality join myself and thousands of happy customers and start your project today be sure to check them out in the link below or at www.pcbway.com Okay, so this isn't a massive build. It's quite a small build, but I do want to get this done. So the first one is a 4.7K resistor in R1. Next is R2, which is a 22K resistor. Next we have R3, R4 and R12, which are all 10K resistors. So next we have R6, which is a 300 ohm. Next we have R7 and R10, which are 220 ohm resistors. Next we have R8, which is a 1K resistor. Not many resistors to go after this. Next we have R9, which is a 5.1. Now the last resistor, which is R11, which is a 2.2K. Next, we'll place the socket in. Now, I always use sockets because it just makes it easier, should 
I plug a faulty chip in because you never know. Next we can put D4 which is a 5.1 diode. Now always make sure that the diodes go the correct way with the line mat on the line on the board. Next we have a couple of diodes again, that is D1 and D5, and these are 1N4148. Again, just make sure they're placed the correct way around. Next we have a couple of BC 547 transistors as you can see there and these can only go in the one way as you can see by the pattern on the board So we're just going to pop this DB25 connector in, the female one, just like so. And now I'm just going to solder these earth pins here so it holds it in place, as well as applying a lot of flux because these connections are close together. And again, we don't want any shorts between them. So last of all are the five pin dins here. So these just go to the left and to the right. So the last thing to do is populate this 6M136 into here, but before I do that, I'm just going to give the board a good clean in the ultrasonic bath. So I'll be back in a bit once I've done that. So here's the finished product. Out of the bath, you can see now it's, it's lovely and clean and it all looks well. It's all soldered nicely. It was an easy build and if you want something easy to do, then I suggest you do this if you're interested in music. So this is all part of a plan for future videos it's all going to tie in together i've got a few projects which i needed this for so over the next couple of projects over pcb way i'll be building towards one main project which we'll be using this but for now let's just see if we can get this tested and see if we can actually get it to do anything so i bought this a few months back on ebay it was sold as non-working no power 
it did turn on but it had a blue screen it's known as the blue screen of death on these axion keyboards and it's all down to a transistor that goes this little tiny transistor on the board now the person who had this had actually had a go at repairing this but didn't put that in a listing as they do and they've actually removed all the pads from the board so i had to retrace all the pads etc and replace a capacitor and a resistor in there to replace this transistor to get it working again and as you can see it's now alive now i didn't do a video on that i may have some pictures somewhere the fixer did i had to put one of the capacitor legs straight to this chip and a resistor down scrape it the track off and straight back but it works and that's the main thing like i say i just wanted a small keyboard i could use and put to side for midi things because i wanted to play around with midi i just want to have a play and a dabble so let's get this connected up to the amiga and see what happens okay so we're just going to load Optomed off the gold drive i've got the disc in there and it's actually loading now Proceed. So if I go to instrument, I load an instrument. Volumes. Okay, so I just need to switch to. Bear with me. This two. Samples. Okay, so we have some samples now. Oh baby, red alert. Yeah. So, I can't see here these, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna press okay. And hopefully, if we go to MIDI, MIDI active, input active. See how there's a tick on each one now? Input channel will be one. I've got this keyboard set to an OK. No. Is it working? I don't think it is. Hmm. But it works if I press the keys on here. So why isn't that working? Is it plugged in properly? MIDI out, MIDI in. I didn't tell you I didn't quite know what I was doing, so let's have a little play. Let's get the settings. There you go, I've reset the keyboard and it seems to be working. Bingo bongo, there you go. I told you didn't know what I was doing. I must have had something set on here that you didn't like. So I should be pressing this now. And you can see the sample is moving. I guess we can change this setting as well. So this is just a test, like I say, to try and get this working. So we can load another sample if we want. So it was instrument, load instrument. That is definitely working because I can see the bars moving as I play around. So that's it i just wanted to show you this working i'm going to uh, end the video now it's just a short video i needed to get this done for this weekend i wanted to get this built so you can see now this is all working i had to reset the settings on the midi keyboard i have no idea how to use this i need to 
watched some videos on how to use it. But I just wanted to show you it working. So that MIDI card does seem to work there. So that MIDI adapter does seem to work that we created. So that's the main thing. So I shall see you in the outro. Thank everybody for watching this video. And if you're new here, please give me the like button. And also, if you haven't done already, please hit that subscribe button. And drop a comment down below, even if it's hello. Don't forget to check out my YouTube buddies. The links are down below. And also, come and join us on our Discord group where we all meet up and have a good chat. All about retro-related stuff. So, like I said before, this is the start of a series of videos that are all going to come together to be MIDI related with one final project which is quite a big build I think which will be getting done as well. I'm still waiting for some stuff to arrive for that but I'm prepping the stuff beforehand. That's it for now. I shall see you next time on Retro For You. See you soon guys. Bye.